Good day grade 12s. My name is Viola from the Distinction Bound Student and I'd like to welcome you to possible essay number 6, which happens to be the last essay under macroeconomics. Remember I highly recommend macroeconomics. I suggest that you watch these 6 videos over and over again in order to pass with a distinction. The essay will probably say discuss in detail the reasons for international trade under the following headings. Demand reasons. Size of population. Income levels. Change in the wealth of the population. Preferences and taste. The difference in consumption patterns. Absolute and comparative advantage. Supply reasons. Natural resources. Climatic conditions. Labor resources. Technological resources. Specialization. Capital. Countries trade with each other when, on their own, they do not have the resources or capacity to satisfy their own needs and wants. By developing and exploiting their domestic scarce resources, countries can produce a surplus and trade this for the resources they need. Let us look at demand reasons for international trade. We will start with level of income. How do you think the level of income can influence imports and exports? Look at what people do when they start making a lot of money. Do you realize that they start buying Gucci, Rolls Royce and more luxurious goods? Do you realize that the influence in this case is level of income that makes them buy from other countries as opposed to local production? When income levels are high, aggregate demand tends to increase, which often creates a demand for imported goods. For example, someone in South Africa may be influenced by his high income to go for shopping in Dubai. Next is consumer preference and tastes. Demand for foreign goods may exist due to differences in consumer preferences and tastes. For example, someone in South Africa may prefer to buy a Lamborghini from Italy instead of a locally produced car. Next is international migration. Immigrants usually demand goods from their country of origin and due to the existing demand, businesses import goods from those countries. For example, entrepreneurs in South Africa import Nestle Saravita. Lobel's Biscuits Willard's Things, Mezo and many more Zimbabwean products because they know that Zimbabwean citizens living in South Africa will prefer these products since they grew up consuming them. The next reason is the difference in consumption patterns. A country's level of development plays an important role on its consumption patterns. For example, a poor country tend to spend the majority of their income on basics, usually agricultural products produced locally. Whereas, in rich countries, the majority of their income may be spent on international luxurious goods. Next we will look at change in the wealth of the population. An increase in the wealth of the population leads to greater demand for goods. People have access to loans and can spend more on luxury goods, many of which are produced in other countries. For example, emerging economies like India and Brazil have experienced rapid economic growth in recent years, leading to a growing middle class with higher disposable incomes. This has driven demand for a wide range of goods, from consumer electronics to automobiles. Up next we look at the size of population. The size of the population impacts demand. If there is an increase in population growth, it causes an increase in demand, as more people's needs must be satisfied. Local suppliers may not be able to satisfy this demand. For example, China with a population of over 1.4 billion, has a significant domestic demand for various goods, including electronics, machinery, and textiles. To meet this demand, China imports raw materials and finished products from various countries. Lastly we will look at the principle of absolute and comparative advantage. We will start with the principle of absolute advantage. Absolute advantage refers to a situation where a country can produce a good or service more efficiently and with fewer resources than another country. In other words, it is the ability of a country to produce more output using the same amount of inputs or produce the same output using fewer inputs compared to another country. A country with an absolute advantage has a higher level of productivity in a specific economic activity. Example of absolute advantage. Let's consider two countries, country A and country B, producing wheat. In one hour, country A can produce 200 bushels of wheat while country B can produce 150 bushels of wheat. Since country A can produce more wheat in the same time, it has an absolute advantage in wheat production over country B. Let's now look at comparative advantage. Comparative advantage refers to a situation where a country can produce a good or service at a lower opportunity cost than another country. Opportunity cost is the value of the next best alternative foregone when choosing one option over another. 
A country with a comparative advantage has a lower opportunity cost of producing a specific good or service compared to another country. Example of comparative advantage. Let's consider the same two countries, country A and country B, but now they are producing both wheat and rice. In one hour, country A can produce 200 bushels of wheat or 100 bags of rice. In the same hour, country B can produce 150 bushels of wheat or 120 bags of rice. The opportunity cost of producing one bag of rice in country A is 2 bushels of wheat, 100 bags of rice divided by 200 bushels of wheat, while in country B, it is 1.25 bushels of wheat, 120 bags of rice divided by 150 bushels of wheat. Comparative Advantage Analysis Country A has a lower opportunity cost of producing rice, 2 bushels of wheat per bag, compared to country B, 1.25 bushels of wheat per bag. Country B has a lower opportunity cost of producing wheat, 0.83 bags of rice per bushel, compared to country A, 0.5 bags of rice per bushel. Based on this analysis, country A has a comparative advantage in producing rice, while country B has a comparative advantage in producing wheat. Therefore, it would be beneficial for both countries to specialize in producing the good in which they have a comparative advantage and trade with each other. Country A can focus on producing rice and export it to country B, while country B can specialize in producing wheat and export it to country A. This way, both countries can benefit from trade and enjoy a more efficient allocation of resources. Let us now look at supply reasons for international trade. The first one is that natural resources are unevenly distributed. Natural resources are unevenly distributed across the world. Each country has its own mix of natural resources that makes it possible to produce certain goods and services more efficiently and at a relatively lower price. This makes it impossible for some countries to produce certain goods. Example 1, South Africa can export seafood to landlocked countries like Zimbabwe because these countries have no direct access to the sea. Example 2, Saudi Arabia is one of the biggest exporters of oil in the world because oil is a natural resource which is unevenly distributed. Next suppy reason is that climatic conditions differ. Differences in climatic conditions between countries make it possible for some countries to produce certain goods at a lower price than other countries. In a water-scarce country like South Africa it is sometimes is necessary to import food. Many crops can only be grown in certain specific climatic conditions. Production of products such as timber, coffee, fruit, meat, maize depends on climatic conditions. Example, Brazil is the biggest exporter of coffee in the world because Brazil's climatic conditions are conducive for the production of coffee. Next supply reason is that labor resources are unevenly distributed. The quality, quantity and cost of labor differ from country to country. In certain countries labor is cheap and in some it is expensive. Some individuals have greater ability and aptitude for certain tasks. Some countries have developed and perfected a particular skill and aptitude for the production of a certain commodity, therefore their skills will be imported. Some countries have highly skilled labor with high level of productivity and some have semi-skilled labor. Countries with skilled labor are able to produce certain goods than those with semi-skilled labor. Example, China is the world's biggest exporter, $1.904 trillion. It exports electrical machinery, data processing equipment, apparel, textiles, iron, steel, optical, and medical equipment. These goods require highly skilled labor and high level of productivity. The next supply reason is that technology differs from country to country. Some countries have access to technological resources that enable them to produce certain goods and services at a low unit cost. Developing countries import capital from developed countries. The availability of equipment and machinery, and other technological factors all influence the supply of goods and services and thereby contribute to cost differences between countries. Example, Japan, USA, South Korea, Germany, China, England, Russia, Singapore and UAE are some of the world's leading countries in technology. Next we have specialization as a supply reason for international trade. Specialization results from the division of labor. Given that each worker, or each producer, is given a specialist role, they are likely to become efficient contributors to the overall process of production and to the finished product. Hence, specialization can generate further benefits in terms of efficiency and productivity. Specialization can be applied to individuals, firms, machinery and technology, and to whole countries.
international specialization is increased when countries use their scarce resources to produce just a small range of products in high volume. Mass production allows a surplus of good to be produced, which can then be exported. This means that goods and resources must be imported from other countries that have also specialized and produced surpluses of their own. When countries specialize, they are likely to become more efficient over time. This is partly because a country's producers will become larger and exploit economies of scale. Example, South Africa specializes on the production of gold and then export to other countries and then import goods that we don't specialize in. The last reason for international trade is capital. Capital is expensive and therefore cannot be easily obtained in certain countries. Certain machinery may not be mobile or easy to move. Capital is not always easily obtained in every country. Developed countries have an advantage over developing countries. Due to lack of capital, some countries cannot produce certain goods they require. That's it with today's essay. We have now covered all possible essays for macroeconomics. You can agree with me that these essays are easy. How then do people fail economics? To this I it's a mystery. We have come to the conclusion that those people deserve lunch. If you know anyone who failed economics please buy them lunch. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also hit the notification bell for you to get notified every time we post new content to our channel. We are also giving away the Distinction Bound Student t-shirts to people who buy more than 10 books. At the moment we have the following textbooks, Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 plus Business Studies Grades 11 and 12. We are looking forward to adding more books to our catalog. Remember our books come in two versions, Complete and No Answers versions. Complete versions have answers and no answers versions do not. Thank you so much for your support. See you in the next video. God bless.